In this session, we are going to look at data memory. First, we'll look at the requirements of the data memory. And in particular, we need to understand what it means to do aligned reads and writes. A related concept is the concept of an exec execution environment interface or the EEI, which determines how we should handle unaligned reads and writes. We will look at some aspects of implementation as well. So what exactly is the data memory? We get an address which is typically stored inside a register or could potentially also be directly derived from an instruction. That is, it might be an immediate operand of an instruction. Based on this address, we need to either retrieve data from the memory or put data into a location in memory. And the data width by which we retrieve or push the data is also important. In general, the assumption we make is that the memory is byte addressable. That is, the smallest unit that we can directly have an address for is a single byte. And therefore, it should be possible for us, if necessary, to read or write a single byte directly in memory. If you think about it, it, it should also at some level have been possible to provide addresses for individual bits. Therefore, this choice of a byte as the unit of addressable memory is pretty much a convention, but that's the convention that has been around for quite a long time, and that's the convention that we are working with. Apart from bytes, we also need to be able to handle half words, that is 16-bit values, and words, that is 32-bit values. One of the questions that comes up in such a context is, we could also have some kind of non-aligned reads and writes. What exactly does this mean? What does it mean to have a non-aligned read or write, and how is it handled is something that we will see more of as we move forward. We'll be using this example in order to illustrate how various load and store operations work. I'm going to assume that mem of i is an array corresponding to the memory, and mem of i essentially contains the value i. That is to say, memory location 0 contains the value 0, memory location 5 contains the value 5, etc. As you can see, this would essentially correspond to so-called high memory, that is the value f, Whereas the value zero essentially corresponds to low memory. Once again, this is just a convention in terms of the terminology that is used to address different parts of memory. Recall that the RISC-V architecture is little endian and therefore the least significant byte is the one that goes into the lowest memory location. What this means is that if I have an instruction such as LW x1 comma 8 of x0, what this means is load a word which by definition is 32 bits from location x0 plus 8 into register x1. Now by convention or by the definition of the instruction set architecture, x0 register always contains the value 0. Therefore, x0 plus 8 is going to have the value 8, which means that I'm going to be loading a 4-byte value or a 32-bit value starting from location number 8 into the register x1. This highlighted portion is those 4 bytes. They contain the value 8 at location 8, 9 at location 9, 10, which is A in hexadecimal in location A, and 11, which is B in hexadecimal in address location 0B or address 11. This essentially corresponds to this value, 0B, 0A, 09, 08. I'm just going to write only the hexadecimal values because it's a lot easier to visualize them and understand what is happening with the different bytes and half words and words when you look in terms of hexadecimal. So this four byte value is what is going to get read into x1 as a result of this load instruction. There are different kinds of load operations as we saw LW x1 8 of x0 would essentially load from the absolute address 8. LW x3 comma 8 of x2 
would take whatever is the value in x2 which we don't know uh, it would depend on the state of the program up to this point it would take that value add 8 as the offset and load that result into the register x3 you can also have an instruction which says lw x0 comma 8 of x1 now this is kind of interesting what it means is take whatever is the value in x1 add 8 to it take that as an address load a value but then try and put it into x0 which essentially means that it will just get discarded why would you ever want to do something like this there could be possible reasons one of them might be to test whether this results in a memory access exception or not in other words if you try to perform this read and there is actually no memory corresponding to this the hardware will actually generate something called an exception which could then be handled by you that would be one way for example for the processor to probe the memory and find out whether or not there is actually physical memory present at this address since you don't really care what is the value present in that address you can just load it into x0 and it will automatically get discarded one issue that comes up when you're trying to load words is the problem of alignment let's consider load word x1 10 of x0 that essentially corresponds to starting from location 10 up to 13 over here but as you can see it's not this group of four values is not starting at a multiple of four that would happen either at 0 4 8 or C these would be multiples of 4 in other words any address 0 4 8 or C would be a properly aligned word address on the other hand trying to read from 0 a would mean that I should get back this value 0 D 0 C 0 B 0 a but depending on how my memory is structured I would probably need to actually load in two separate 32-bit values one starting from 0 8 to 0 B and the other starting from 0 C to 0 F take out the appropriate portions of both of those combine them and generate the result now certain kinds of hardware do actually go ahead and implement this but there are other kinds of processors in which this would just be treated as an exception part of this is actually left as a choice to the processor designer in fact this is defined as something called the execution environment interface this is the interface between the execution of the program and the environment it is running in if you have a processor that actually chooses to implement such non-aligned accesses perfect you will actually get back the correct value as you want on the other hand a processor could choose not to implement this because it definitely does complicate the way that you access or address memory and instead what you could do is if you find that someone is trying to load an address load a, a word starting from an address which is not a multiple of four you generate an exception that goes into the EAI the execution environment interface which in turn has some definition of how to handle such an exception probably it will convert that into two separate reads get the value back and give you the aligned result but that is something that can actually be handled in software and does not need to be handled by the processor for our purposes we are going to just leave it at that all that we will say is the processor by itself need not implement unaligned accesses to words or half words instead what it can do is generate an exception exceptions will come later in the design process of our system let's look at a few more examples how do we load a half word if i look at the half word what we actually have is it's only 16 bits which means that the final value that should be present inside x1 should correspond only to the 16 bits that i read the fact that i might have a 32 bit value at that address is irrelevant i want to get only the bottom 16 bits probably the simplest way to do this would be to use the same memory access mechanism read out the full 32 bit word and then discard the parts that you don't care about so that finally x1 gets the value 
with zeros in the higher order locations. In general, it should not be zeros. It has to be sign extended. On the other hand, there is a separate, which is a separate command called LHU, which is unsigned, where you would actually extend with zeros. Now, what if I try to do a LHX1 10 of x0? Note that 10 is properly aligned as far as a half word axis is concerned. So this is not an unaligned axis and it is not okay to generate an exception in this case. What you have to do is to actually get the data out, do some kind of shifting or some other mechanism to get the correct value that is 0, 0 B, 0 A into the 16 bits that you need, sign extend as required, mask out everything else and then put the value into x1. This set of steps that I've shown over here, t1 getting the value 0b, 0a, 09, 08, t2 then doing a right shift and x1 getting t2 gives the impression that this needs to take three steps or three cycles to do it. It should not. You should be able to do this combinationally at one shot by using suitable multiplexing. The important thing is all of this manipulation needs to actually get implemented inside the processor memory interface, which means it is part of the processor and needs to get implemented as part of the design. What about loading bytes? Any address is of course byte aligned, which means that I could, for example, try to read from location nine. How do I do this? Read the full word as before, mask out just the set of bits that I need, make sure that everything else is removed and shifted to the appropriate position and then update it into the register. What all this means is that we can now visualize this in terms of a memory structure which could potentially look something like this. N over here is the total number of memory locations. It would typically be some power of two. For example, it could be one kilobyte, one K locations, or it could be two K locations, or it could be 64 K locations, or one meg locations. Those are typically convention for the simple reason that the number of address bits that I use, two to the power of that would essentially be n. On the other hand, I could also use multiple blocks of memory so that I might have one block of memory which is one megabyte in size, another block which is half a megabyte and the total memory available to the system could be the sort of combination of both of those. Which is why I'm just writing this as n to indicate that it is some number of maximum locations that I could have for the memory. Why am I dividing it into four blocks, eight bits each? That's to indicate that each of these blocks is responsible for storing a single byte. That makes it a little easier for us to implement all the aligned accesses to half words and bytes. How do we do this? Use the same address bus to all four of these blocks. And as far as reading is concerned, we just combine the values coming out of the four different blocks just append them one after the other to get a 32 bit value. This is very straightforward. There was absolutely no contention or conflicts involved over here. But remember that when you're trying to read a half word from the higher address bits or a byte from something which is not in the uh, least significant position, you will have to do some kind of adjustment of this R data. Now, clearly I do not want that to be inside the memory block. We'll look at it in a moment to see how it can be implemented. What about writing? Once again, the 32 bit data that comes in from the write data bus needs to be split four ways. I just need to take out the appropriate set of eight bits and feed it to each of the memory blocks. What I can do instead along with this is to add on a write enable signal, which is four bits wide. Rather than having a single write enable that tells me whether or not to write into the memory, I use four separate write enable signals, which allow me to control exactly which of these four blocks of memory is activated for writing. The actual writing of course happens in a synchronous fashion in general. So we would still use the clock, but controlling whether or not the data actually gets written into the memory block is determined by the value of WE. Now, as mentioned earlier, both the alignment of the data that needs to get written, or in other words, the W data value, or 
de-aligning the data which is coming back from the R data so that it goes into the processor appropriately needs to be handled somewhere. We are going to do that outside of the memory interface. The memory by itself should not really know or care whether the processor is trying to read or write a single bit or a single byte or a word or a half word, except for, of course, the write enable signals. So the processor interface to the memory will finally consist of giving it the address, giving it the W data and the WE, the four bit signal while taking back the R data that it gives. The rest of the actual alignment shifting and so on will be handled inside the processor block itself. So having seen this, let's also briefly look at how store operations work. Store operations is where writing into memory is happening. So let's consider the case where x1 has a value 01020304x. And as an example, let's consider store word x1 into 8 of x0. As you can see, the values 08, 09, 0a, 0b need to get updated. But remember that 08 needs to get the least significant byte. So 04 goes in there. Whereas 0b gets the most significant byte, being the high memory, and the value 01 goes in there. As we can see, all four of the bytes in that four byte segment are getting updated. And the simplest way to do this is to simply use a 4-bit write enable with all the 4 bits set to 1. What about a misaligned store word? Once again, as before, we will leave this out and say that we just generate an exception. Actually implementing it with the kind of memory architecture that was shown in the previous diagram would be quite complicated. It would definitely require two separate operations. You would need to mask out the bottom half of the top word and write that out separately into one location and the top half of the bottom word would need to get written somewhere else. For our purposes, we will just skip this and say that a misaligned word write will generate an exception. On the other hand, store half word is simpler. This, in this case, what we have is, you just may need to make sure that only the appropriate set of bytes are updated. In this case, even though x1 contains four byte value, we want to take only the bottom four bits and they are the ones that will get written into the locations 09 and 08. We do this by using a two bit write enable mask, which allows us to write just the two bytes that we want. Now what happens if we want to write into location 10? This is after all a perfectly valid aligned half word store. So we cannot generate an exception in this case, we have to be able to handle this. What we need to make sure is that still the value 0304 is the one that gets written because that is after all the half word that is stored in the register X1. But now it has to go into the location 0B, 0A. Shift the data so that it gets aligned properly into the upper two bits and make sure that those are the ones that get enabled in the write enable signal. And this is how we can implement a store half word. Finally, coming to a store byte, I would need to take just the least significant value over here and make sure that goes into the appropriate location, which means that I need to shift it so that it goes into the appropriate location. And normally I would say also mask out the value, but in this case, just by using a single bit write enable, we can ensure that only one byte gets written. So in this way, the architecture that was shown briefly earlier can allow us to implement all the different variants of storing data, words, half words, and bytes, as long as the addresses are appropriately aligned, word aligned, half word aligned, or byte aligned. Similarly, the reading also can be done appropriately. And the assumption we'll make is that if the alignment is not correct, we will actually just generate an exception rather than trying to handle it in hardware. The module interface in terms of Verilog basically says that the DMEM module would have a clock input. This is required for the synchronous write operations. 
It could also be used for synchronous read. This is a decision that you can take and will essentially determine how you implement it. But what we will then have is we have a 32-bit address, 32-bit write data that goes into the memory along with a 4-bit write enable which allows us to select which of the four banks is being written into. And of course, the output of the memory itself is a 32-bit read data byte. 